Welcome back, everybody, to Mr. K's 30 Minutes of Math. I hope you're having a great Friday afternoon. It is very sunny out there, so I hope you get a little bit of time outside today, especially because I think it's going to rain a fair amount this weekend, so please get outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. All right, let's get started. We're going to begin, as always, with our math riddle of the day, so I'm going to shut the video off so I can focus on our math. And let's begin. All right, as you may recall, <clears throat> we had this uh, kind of interesting little riddle yesterday. Here's how it went. Let's say you won a special lottery ticket that has two payout options. The first option is $1 million right now. That sounds pretty good. The second option is one penny today, and then you double that to two pennies, and then you double that to four pennies, and you keep going for 30 days. And the question is, which is the better deal? Option one or option two? I'm curious if anybody gave this some thought or maybe even tried to work it out mathematically. I see a few folks writing in option two. Well, let's see how it turns out. Drum roll, please. Option two, it is. If you take option two, you're gonna wind up with over five million dollars. It's pretty incredible to think about that, starting off from one teeny little penny. Well, let's prove it because that's quite the claim that in 30 days you would go from one penny to over $5 million. So let's start, I'm gonna uh, set up 30 days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, halfway there, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, this is the home stretch, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. All right, now, we started on day one with one measly penny. Day two, we doubled it to two pennies, two cents. Day three, we doubled again to four, and then eight cents and then 16 cents, 32 cents, 64 cents. So after one week, you've got 64 cents. I know it doesn't sound like a, mot, like a lot. All right, let's keep going into our next week. You double that, and now we have a dollar 28. And then you double that, and you have $2.56. Now, to make this just simpler and to go a little bit more quickly, I'm going to approximate and call that $2.50. Now, this is actually less than you would be getting, but this is just an example. So if we doubled $2.50, we'd get $5. Then we'd have $10, $20, $40, $80. then $80. So after two weeks, we'd be at $80. All right, let's keep going. 160, $320. <clears throat> Keep going. 640, 1,280. Ooh, it's getting kind of big now. 2,560. All right, I'm going to do the same thing I did before and just call this 2,500. So the next day we'd be at 5,000. And at the end of three weeks, we'd be at $10,000. So getting big, but still pretty far from that 5 million number. Let's see how it keeps going. 20,000, 40,000, 80,000, 160,000, 320,000, 
640,000, oh my gosh, 1,280,000, 2,560,000, and if I just rounded that to 2.5 million, we'd be at 5 million and change after 30 days. Pretty incredible. I think it deserves a round of applause. So if your parents ask you to do any chores and you're negotiating for a uh, small compensation, just tell them all you want is one penny uh, the first time you do the chores and then double it for 30 days and see if they will go for it. All right, let's dive into our homework from last night. We had some coffee shop math, which was putting together all of our fractions work. Let's take a look at what it says. The coffee shop sells small bags of coffee beans, and the bags come in two sizes, four-fifths kilogram and seven-twelfths kilogram. How much more coffee does the bigger bag have? Well, we have four fifths kilogram, kg is kilogram, and seven twelfths kilogram. And we wanna know which one is bigger first, and then how much bigger is it? So we have uh, two different fractional units, fifths and twelfths. So the question is, what fractional unit should we decompose the fifths and the twelfths into so that we can compare them. Anybody have any idea what fractional unit would be a good idea for us to decompose our fifths and our twelfths into so that we can compare them? Anybody have any ideas what fractional unit should we use? You can go ahead and write it in. Ah, Holden writes sixtieths. I like that idea. Let's try it. We're going to decompose our fifths into sixtieths by multiplying by 12. So we'll get 48 sixtieths. All right, so that's this one. And then we have 7 twelfths over here. And we can decompose these twelfths by multiplying by 5. So we'd have 35 sixtieths over here. All right, let me erase this so we have a little bit more room and we don't get so cluttered. Okay, so uh, let's see, 48, six, whoops, excuse me for that. 48 sixtieths over here, 35 sixtieths over here. Clearly 48 sixtieths is more, and how much more? Well, 48 minus 35 is 13 sixtieths more. That's how much more the bigger bag, four fifths, is than the smaller bag. All right, well done. Let's move on to tonight's, I'm sorry, today's uh, work. We're gonna continue with the coffee shop math. We have some delicious cheesecakes to look at and work with. So go ahead and try this problem. We'll be right back in just a minute or so. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, welcome back everybody. I know my drawings weren't exactly the best. Yes, I probably should have used a ruler, but I was trying to be a little bit quick about it. So I think they'll suffice for now. First cheesecake right here has 16 slices and there were three slices left, three slices left. So um, let's do this. I'm just gonna color in the three that are left. So here's one, two, three, and just so that you can still see them, I will create some dividing lines. So we have three uh, slices left, and the other cheesecake was cut into 10 slices, and four slices were sold. Four were sold, meaning six were left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so right away, it should be clear that uh, more of the second cheesecake was left over. But the question is how much total cake is left in the fridge? So for the first cake, we have three pieces out of 16 or three sixteenths. And for the second cheesecake, we have six pieces out of 10 or six tenths. And so the question is, how much do we have all together, all together? Uh, well, we have sixteenths and we have tenths. So what would be a good fractional unit for us to decompose these into? Um, I see some folks said 80th, some folks said 160th. You know what, those both work beautifully. Um, let's try, uh, let's try 80th, see how that goes. All right, so if we turned our 16th into 80th, we're going to multiply by five. So 15 80th is the same as 3 16 And over here, we'll do 80th multiplying by eight which gives us 48 eightieths. So we have 48 eightieths and 15 eightieths. If we put those together, 15 and 48, we wind up with 63 eightieths of a pie, uh, I'm sorry, a cheesecake left over. 63 eightieths, uh, by the way, um, it would be the same as 126 160ths if you wanted to go that route. Okay, let us move on to our math joke of the day. What do you call a teapot on the top of Mount Everest? Go ahead and give that one a try. All right, welcome back. Uh, you guys have some pretty funny answers. A frozen pot, high tea, high point. Um, I'll get, this is my very sad looking teapot on the top of my very sad looking Mount Everest. Sorry about that, friends. All right, well, what do you call a teapot on the top of Mount Everest? A high pot in use or a hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. I know that one is definitely a grown up. But I really like it nonetheless. If you're scratching your head, a oh, little tank, but it's not in use. Somebody might be up there cooking some tea because they climbed all the way up Mount Everest. If you're scratching your head about a hypotenuse, let's take a look at what we're talking about. When you have a particular kind of triangle, like this one, with a right angle, so remember, that's our right angle sign, and a right angle is 90 degrees, exactly 90 degrees. So anytime you see a corner that looks like an L, and it could be any direction, 
that perfect L shape is 90 degrees, and that is called a right angle, okay? Uh, and we can see uh, right here, that's the symbol, but we can see the angle is right here, perfect right angle. That's 90 degrees. All right, so when you have a triangle like that, you have uh, a hypotenuse right there opposite the right angle. So the right angle is formed by two sides, and the third side opposite the angle is called the hypotenuse, hypotenuse. And what's cool about the hypotenuse is it is always a shorter way to get from, let's say, here is point A and here is point B. And let's say these are streets and you were gonna walk here and then turn left and go here to get to B. Well, the hypotenuse is always the shortcut. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this hypotenuse. Let me clear all this off so we have a little bit more room. I'm gonna bring out your favorite thing, the ruler. And let's make a line right there for our hypotenuse. I'm gonna use green today. Maybe if I can get it to work, yes, okay. There we go. And it's a line, which means it keeps going forever. So we're gonna put those arrows on. My question for you all, uh, first, let's see, let's call that point A and let's call that point B. So what are the coordinates for A and what are the coordinates for B? Go ahead and type those in. The coordinates for A and the coordinates for B. Take a second to do that and let's see what you guys have. Um, remember A, we do uh, for A and B, for all of them, we do the x-axis first, which direction left and right, and then we do the y-axis, which direction up and down, and by how much. So let's take a look. A, remember we always start at the origin right here. A is one, two, three to the left, so it's negative three, and then it's one up. So positive one. And then B is one, two, three, four to the right. So it's positive four. And then one, two, three, four, five up, positive five. So those are our two coordinates. Uh, well done, folks. Um, I see a couple of folks writing in. Some of them have them backwards. Remember, we always do the X axis first, and then we do the y-axis. Okay, my question now is what is the slope? What is the slope? Remember how steep the line is. And to do that, we do rise, how much the line rises over the run, how much it goes across. So go ahead and take a second to figure that out using the points A and B. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look to find our slot rise over run. All right, I'm going to start here at A, and we're going to go up one, two, three, four units. Okay, and then we, how much are we running across? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Very good. So our slope is four sevenths. Well done. Right, I have a question for you. I'd like you to type in to think about this for a second. If I drew a line that had a slope of 
one, whoops, of one seventh, one seventh, okay? Would that be a steeper line or a shallower line? Steeper than this line, the green line, or shallower than this line? Go ahead and take a second to think about it and type in what you think. Would it be steeper or shallower if I went to one seventh as my slope? One seventh as my slope. Okay, we have a little bit of disagreement, which is wonderful, which means we have some discussion to have. All right, if I had a line that had a slope of one seventh, <clears throat> one seventh, I would rise by one and then run by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I would be connecting these two points. And so my line would look like that. One seventh would be shallower, would be shallower. Okay. Let's try one more. Uh, here we have a, a somewhat skinnier triangle. Go ahead and tell me what point A is and point B is. Let's start there. What are the coordinates? I'll give you a second to think through that one. Okay, well done. I see lots of folks writing in. I am so proud of you guys. All right, I'm going to use yellow to start. We always start at the origin. Remember that. All right, let's look at A. One, two, three, four, five to the left, so negative five. And then one, two, three, four, five down. So again, negative five, negative five. All right, let's go to B now. I'll use blue. First, our x-axis, one, two to the left, so negative two. And then one, two, three, four, five up, so positive five. So negative five, negative five, and negative two, positive five. Well done, guys. Awesome work. Let's check out our slope of our hypotenuse. All right, get my line ready. I'll do green. Okay, and as always, it's a line, so I'm adding my arrows. Go ahead and take a minute to determine the slope of the green line. Go ahead. Welcome back, everybody. I see a lot of answers coming in. Let's take a look. I'm going to start at point A. Let's count up first. We'll do our rise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's our rise. And then our run, how much across? One, two, three. Three across, ten thirds. So that is a pretty steep line. Pretty steep line. If I had a slope of, let's say, 12 thirds, would I get a steeper line? So this is where we are. Would I get steeper or would I get shallower? Steeper or shallower? What do you guys think? Go ahead and write it in. If I went to 12 thirds, 
would I be steeper or shallower? Take a minute and think about that. Folks are beginning to write in. It looks like we have agreement that it would be steeper. That's right, it would be because let's say we had 12. So I would have counted, here's 10, 11, 12. And then I would have gone over two, three, one, two, three. So here's where B would have been if I had 12 thirds and the line would look like this. Let's draw it in blue. Whoops. Holy moly, that was terrible. Let's try that again. There we go. And do you see how it is a little bit steeper? There's a little bit of distance in between there. All right, well done guys. I'm very impressed with your work. <laughs> Uh, I do want us to do one more of our fraction problems before we get to today's riddle. So go ahead and work on this one. Okay, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, sorry for my crude drawings once again, but just trying to move quickly. Uh, all right, we have a bag that contains four fifths kilograms of sugar. So here's our bag right here. And then we took some of that sugar and we filled up an empty can with one tenth kilogram and then used three twentieths of a kilogram for a cake. And the question is, after we've used the sugar in the can and in the cake, how much is left? So to set up our problem, it's going to be four fifths kilogram minus one tenth kilogram for the can and then minus three twentieths kilogram for the cake. Real quick, what should we decompose our fifths and our tenths into so that we can uh, complete this uh, problem. It kind of gives it away because I didn't mention 20ths because that is what we are going to decompose into. All right, so four fifths is the same as 16 20ths and one tenth is the same as 2 twentieths. So I'm gonna rewrite the problem over here. 16 twentieths minus, uh, making sure I'm looking at the right thing, 2 twentieths minus, uh, where am I? 2 twentieths, <laughs> my apologies. Um, I did my 16 twentieths, I did my two twentieths. Oh, I didn't do my uh, three twentieths, minus three twentieths, apologies. Uh, so 16 minus two is 14 and 14 minus three is 11 twentieths, 11 twentieths. And I do think we had a few folks write that in. So well done, well done, well done. Very, very pleased to see all your great work. All right. Here is, Tonight's homework, take a screenshot, take a picture, write it down. Jack spent three hours, sorry, three quarters of an hour biking and five sixths of an hour jogging. Afterwards, he swam for one eighth of an hour. 
how much time did Jack exercise before he went swimming? Before he went swimming. Okay, and finally, our riddle of the day. Which four-digit number, when multiplied by four, gives you the same number in reverse? So it shows you A, B, C, D. Each letter stands for a different number. Times four, when you multiply that number by four, you get D, C, P, A. You get the same number, but in reverse. Go ahead, take a picture of that screenshot or just write it down. Try that one, it's a fun one. Uh, good luck, have a great weekend. It was fun to see all of you today and I will be back with Mr. K's 30 minutes of math on Monday. Have a great day everyone, bye.